welcome everybody today's uh, presentation is on uh, apa style and you know what is apa style uh, why is it important what are the elements of apa style how uh, you know we can uh, use it uh, for our writing etc so uh, without any other uh, explanation i'll straight away go to the presentation and i'll just uh, share my screen in a moment's time uh, we are at present using uh, the uh, APA uh, style, the se uh, seventh edition. So if you search for the publication manual of the uh, American Psychological Association, it's the seventh edition that we are using. And there are certain changes in the seventh edition. That is why this uh, particular session is uh, even more important because, you know, we have to uh, understand what are the changes and, you know, uh, and what are the consistencies. So uh, I'm sure you can see the screen. Right. So uh, why is style important? APA stands for American Psychological Association, as, as I said. And why is it important? Because it helps authors present their ideas in a clear, concise, and organized manner. And I'm sure as journalism students, we know the uh, important points of style because, you know, even in our print editions or in television or in, you know, our other platforms, uh, uh, consistency and uniformity is a very important element because uh, if, if the way you write and if the way you present things, they, they are not consistent and they are not uniform, uh, then, you know, uh, uh, the uh, focus shifts, then, you know, uh, the readers get distracted. That is why this uniformity and consistency is important. And that is why we need to have a style which people across the board they can follow so this enables readers to focus on the ideas uh, you know rather than formatting and all those things and they can also you know quickly scan for where are the quick points where are the findings who are the sources so uh, uh, it also encourages authors to disclose all the important information because uh, anybody who's working on that field you know he might need additional information and it's uh, that is the, how they get this information uh, it also, as I said, allows readers to dispense with all the distractions because uh, there would be no omissions that, you know, uh, because the style would deal with, you know, almost everything about writing. We are only touching on the important parts of this APA style in this uh, uh, one presentation and uh, one presentation will never be enough for, uh, uh, you know, to, uh, the uh, entirety of uh, APA stylization. but. Uh, you know, it uh, concerns almost everything from punctuation to capitalization to how things are cited to how they are, how statistics are presented to how uh, figures are formatted to how tables are constructed, so on and so forth. So that is why uh, anybody, especially those uh, in research writing, they have to be aware of uh, uh, these uh, style requirements. Uh, most of the social science work we do, including in uh, media and communication, is on APA style. There are many other styles. I'll uh, introduce you to uh, some of them uh, at the end of this uh, uh, lecture and uh, uh, but uh, this is uh, uh, one thing that we must know the APA style if we know then you know the others will be easier before I start uh, these are the kinds of articles that the APA manual talks about and I'm sure you are we are aware of you know uh, the difference between quantitative and qualitative articles the art Kind of, uh, if a case study or an anthropological study or whatever that would be a qualitative article. Also, we have articles where a particular study is replicating one study which has taken place in uh, one set of conditions. So there are replication articles as well, and I'm sure you can understand that you know all these articles will be very different. Uh, in their approach, they will have, you know, different focus. Uh, we have uh, meta analysis as well, which uh, is a kind of, you know, an, an, an overview of uh, maybe a, a quantitative uh, approach on, on a particular topic or a qualitative approach on a particular topic. So a meta analysis is another kind of a research approach. We also have literature review articles. It's basically about, you know, what people uh, have been working on. Uh, Say, for example, uh, uh, you know, the uh, representation of uh, COVID in the media. So we have uh, such kind of articles as well. 
Uh, another kind of article that this uh, uh, manual talks is about, you know, theoretical articles. So this is about uh, trying to put across a theoretical basis for uh, uh, certain things that, uh, you know, uh, interest the researcher. It could also be about method methodological approaches. So in communication, for example, you know, there are various fields, you know, say, for example, using uh, uh, computing, you know, for, for uh, uh, you know, co co communication purposes and also, you know, other methodological approaches. It could be the use of machine learning. It could be the use of uh, coding, etc., etc. So, or, or, you know, other kinds of approaches as well. So uh, that are those kind of articles would be concentrating on uh, the methodological approaches. Uh, we could also have, you know, uh, that is uh, uh, viewed as others in, in the uh, manual. But basically, it could uh, include uh, comments. So uh, maybe somebody has written an, a paper, and you know some other author has to has a view on that particular paper. So he could write a comment in the same journal or in another journal. It could be bo a book reviews, of course, is uh, uh, known to people. It could be letters or or even obituaries. So these are you know uh, some of the rare articles. So these are the nine basic nine kinds of articles that there are others as well. So these are the major ones. Uh, so uh, I'm straightway going on to the do's and don'ts of uh, APS style. So as as we have just you know spoken about, there has to be certain kind of uh, consistency. There has to be certain kind of uniformity, uh, and you know uh, making it reader friendly so that anybody who's reading this particular article would be you know uh, would not be uh, distracted by other things. Earlier, uh, you know, if you see the earlier editions of uh, APA style, they uh, generally uh, will talk about 12, uh, you know, you're writing everything in that 12 point times New Roman. But off late, because, you know, there are so many other options available and there are so many kinds of, you know, uh, writing that has to be done. Uh, the uh, APA style book, it talks about, you know, other fonts as well. It talks of a sans serif. Now, I'm sure uh, you understand the difference between uh, serif and sans serif. The font which you which I've used on this particular thing, this is a Bookman Antica, and this is a serif font. And the other font, the one which you can uh, see down here, this is a sans serif font. So the ones which have a slash at their, uh, you know, uh, on these uh, letters, they are serif fonts. But if there are no slashes, say for example, Arial, then that would be a sans serif font. So uh, the APA uh, style sheet talks of both kinds of uh, you know, fonts. It talks of uh, sans serif font like Calibri or Arial or, or, or uh, Lucida sans Unicode or a serif font such as Times New Roman or 11 point Georgia. So some are in 10, some are in 12. I'm sure you understand, you know, those, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, an 11 point Arial would appear as big as 12 point New uh, Times New Roman. We are not in a, uh, you know, we're not talking about, you know, these type fonts and all, but, you know, there is an explanation for that. Uh, uh, there is another application known as LaTeX, and that uses a font called uh, known as Computer Modern. So these are the ones which APA uh, uh, recommends. So if you are doing in any kind of writing, you would be advised to do this. Uh, you know, use this. Earlier it used to be only 12 point times New Roman. Now we have some other options. So I'm sure you know you understand the importance of uh, you know fonts. If somebody is using Comic Sans, for example, you would immediately understand, okay, okay, that person is taking this a little bit more casually. So the font itself, you know, has a personality. It could be staid, it, 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 it could be funny, it could be, you know, uh, irreverent, it could be, you know, kiddish, it could be amateurish, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, the, the type, uh, the font that you uh, use for your writing is a very important decision you make. Uh, most of the writing, for academic purposes, they are double space, and this space has to be, you know, uh, done uh, on the, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, commands. It, it it is it shouldn't be you know done by you know just repeatedly hitting enter after you know uh, type a line. So it, it should be you know there in the original command that you uh, put in the page uh, margin, etc. Uh, the margin required for uh, academic articles is one inch on all sides. So that would be about uh, 2.54 centimeters if you don't like inches. So that's very important. Uh, these might appear, you know, very basic, but uh, if you uh, do something wrong there, then the person who's reading the paper, uh, you know, immediately gets the impression that you do not know APA style. Hence, you know, uh, uh, there is uh, one kind of a distraction there. 
so it's important that we understand you know what all this means paragraph indentation every first line of a new paragraph should be indented half an inch from the left margin it should be uh, you know a half an inch on the inside half an inch would be about you know 1.27 centimeters so that's again a very important thing to understand that you know uh, when we do our normal writing or even in the word processor when you hit enter it doesn't uh, uh, indent by itself but it's important that we give that indentation uh, alignment again is very important it has to be left justified all the times it is it, it it shouldn't be full justified and that again is an important uh, 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 decision that you should remember that let's not make it uh, full justified it should be left justified so that the right margin is ragged and that's how you know all academic articles are punctuation you know it should be followed by one space uh, that's pretty basic so this is about the basics now there are some exceptions to the font so i'll just talk about those exceptions so uh, it might contain other fonts or font sizes under the following circumstances within figure we'll talk about those figure images we have we are supposed to use a sans serif font with a type size between 8 and 14 points so you can use anything between 8 and 14 whenever there is a figure and you are you know trying to emphasize something or you are trying to present something we'll come back to figures again uh when presenting computer code uh, you can use a monospace font that means something which has just a single space not a double space it could be a 10 point lucida console or 10 point uh, courier new and when you're uh, presenting a footnote uh, in a page then the default uh, footnote settings of the word processor uh, microsoft word or you know any other processor that can be used for example it could be just 10 point font with single line spacing so all these uh, recommendations are from the 7th edition of the american psychological association uh, publication manual and uh, the latest one is from this year is from 2020 now we are going on to what should be there in the title page the most important part of a paper or or the one that uh, uh, you know your reader is first going to have a look at so the title page should have the paper title obviously it should have the author names and affiliations very very important uh, you know your name and your affiliation if if you are not affiliated to any university or a college or an institute then you should write about you know independent or whatever you, but at least uh, you know your identification should be there and an author note i will explain all these three things in a moment's time so these are the information which are supposed to be there on the title page of a journal paper uh if you can see that uh, what i'll do is i'll try and uh, zoom it for a moment uh, so if you see that the first thing is there uh, there is the running head so uh, every apa style uh, journal paper has to have a running head and that's one uh, thing that we must remember and then you know there's a page number it starts from page 1 itself if i zoom in here again the page title who are the authors and what are their affiliations so uh, uh, again you know they are double space but between the paper title and the author there is an extra space as you can see there and uh, down below you know there is the author's note and along with author's note they have this uh, at times this orchid the identity to identify them so uh, if there are two people with the same name you know they'll have different orchid identities so uh, that's you know kind of a digit uh, digital identification mark that you have so this is you know a kind of a title page again you know this is from that same book that i was talking about so it is having a paper title it is having a running head it's having a page number it's having authors affiliations and author note so so far very simple uh in the author note you know if, if there is a uh, some change of affiliation there are times you know when the page was written and when it was accepted you know it's a long time it takes a long time they might have you know changed their jobs by then so that has to be there on the author's page uh there are disclosures and acknowledgments if somebody had paid you know maybe if if it was a ugc sponsored or an icssr sponsored or whether it was sponsored by some other agency it has to be provided there contact information again is very important if somebody wants to contact the info, uh, you know or the author they must get the information right there at uh, up front so there we are going to the page elements what are the things which are there in the page elements so th there are uh, uh, you know these seven or eight elements first of all there is a page header i've just spoken about those running heads and the page number which have to be there uh most journal articles will uh, have an abstract you know maybe in within maybe at times from 150 to 500 words which has all the important information about the 
paper it will have a reference list at the end the key word identify uh, letting people identifying what the uh, paper is about say so for example if if it's a uh, communication paper from the computer field the keywords will make me understand that okay it's not for us social scientists it's for the technical people so the keywords are you know often placed just immediately after the abstract we have footnotes at times just to provide those explanations and uh, we have uh, figures and we have appendices so these are the uh, information that uh, we have on the page elements how are they ordered the first page should be the title page the one i just showed you immediately after the title page we should have the abstract it should start on a new page after the title page the text should not start beneath the abstract but it should start on a new page as i said these are very important things because uh, people get used to reading things like that so if you if you uh, uh, violate some of these uh, uh, guidelines then you know there will be uh, some kind of a distraction for the person who's used to reading you know things uh, in a systematic manner uh, there are references which will be after the text and uh, uh, you know there may be footnotes on on uh, uh, a new page after the references uh, uh, tables you know it can be placed on two different places i'll talk about the tables and figures uh, later on and then you know we can have appendices or any other supplementary material that is there so this is the order of pages according to the apa uh, uh, style so uh, I'll straight away go on to figures first, and then you know uh, we'll come back to text and you know the citation on which are the more important part. So uh, the figure, you know, uh, whatever figure you are choosing to uh, use for your uh, paper, you should uh, you know keep all these things in mind. First of all, it should augment the text. It should not just be a repetition of whatever is there in the text. it should convey only the essential information so so if you are cluttering the figure with a lot of information then you are uh, not doing a good job uh, it omits visually uh, distracting details so even in our data visualization classes we talk a lot of these things so it should not have too many things it should have only the important information which you are trying to convey it it should be easy to read because you know um, whatever symbols or lines or you know whatever it, it should make uh, sense they are large enough to be seen so it shouldn't you know don't uh, shouldn't have to use a microscope or you know you shouldn't have to bring it very close to a uh, eye to you know uh, see and interpret so it should be large enough on its own it must be easy to understand so the purpose must be readily apparent it must be carefully planned and prepared and uh, it, it must be consistent with the similar figures in the same article so every other figure you know in terms of the font you're using in terms of the labeling in terms of uh, uh, other conventions that you're using they should be uh, consistent across the same article uh this is about the in text citation i'll i'll uh, talk about those uh, citations in, in, in greater details but here i'm just introducing if there is just one author then the citation is you know we we last write the last name of the author and the year in which it was published when there are two authors we just write you know the name of the two authors if there are three or more authors we write the name of the first author and then we write et al then a full stop comma and then the year if there is a group author for example then in, in the first instance i will put on the full name with the abbreviation later on i'll use the abbreviations so i'll i'll come back to these citations in bigger detail in a moment's time because you know citations are of two kinds Uh, the in-text citation when you are writing a text and you are citing somebody's work, because you know that is the job, uh, and that or that is why you know we have all these uh, style sheets and all. First thing is to you know, uh, uh, cite the author, cite different kinds of work. I will talk you know in details about you know from journal articles to webs. Talk about different kinds of articles. And how we do it? I'll show it on a Microsoft Word uh, thing as well. so uh, it could be parenthetical citation you know they are there so for example at the end you have you have cited you know uh, for example the news coverage can distort the public's perception of consensus on an issue uh, the citation is uh, you know goes like this the name of the author comma the year so this is the parenthetical uh, uh, citation if other text appears within the parenthetical citation then we have to use a comma after the year uh so for example we'll say see pandit 2020 for more detail 
So this is what a citation appears. It is inside the text, and that's important because you know it doesn't stop people from uh, 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 you know um, reading further. Because earlier, and there are many other ways of uh, 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 you know um, citing, and you know there were things where people would write those numbers, and for that you know people would have to go back and see again, and so on and so forth. So that is why this particular citation is a very good way of not restricting the flow of the reader. the other citation is the narrative citation so here uh, the author appears in running text and the date appears in parenthesis so it is in a running text the other uh, the earlier one was you know you were citing the author at the end of the uh, sentence but you know it has to be before the uh, full stop it's not like full stop and then this it's inside the full stop and uh, uh, the parenthesis is for the author it's not only for the year when it is a part of the narrative uh, narrative when it is a part of the text itself say for example uh, the same thing written like that 1 to 2020 noted the dangers of falsely balanced news coverage so this means you are citing it as part of a narration you are not putting it at the end but you are citing it as part of the narration in cases where author and uh, uh, date both appear in the narrative in 2020 so the, you know the narrative is about the year itself so in 2020 when you noted the dangers of whatever don't don't uh, uh, give uh, stress to the name it's just a fictitious name so in 2020 he noted the dangers of falsely so uh, these are two different kinds of citations and i will give you very many examples of these kind of citation these are in text citation while you're writing you are citing your sources because uh, you have to keep on citing the sources as you write down uh another important uh, element uh, for uh, the apa style is to reduce bias in terms of and there are you know uh, lots and lots of recommendations about you know how you should uh, talk about you know older uh, people how you should talk about uh, adolescents how you should talk about you know so, so that you know there is no bias in your uh, language in in terms of uh, uh, gender in terms of disability in terms of uh, stereotype as well in terms of uh, socio economic uh, status as well so uh, not you know uh, uh, avoiding all kinds of bias when you are referring to people of these kind even for you know the racial and ethnic uh, identity you should be aware of uh, uh, not making it bias and especially about stereotypes you shouldn't be you know uh, promoting stereotypes uh, there's another thing uh, which is very interesting is about the uh, concept of intersectionality because there are people who have you know multiple they identify themselves uh, in multiple ways it, it could be your religious identity it could be your regional identity it could be a linguistic identity it could be a professional identity so you should understand you know whenever there is that question of intersectionality that ha that has to be uh, uh, put out like that i'll again go back to the figures that i was uh, talking about earlier so now we are talking in, in greater details so make sure that the labels are uh, next to the elements themselves uh, we have spoken about the sans serif fonts very important that the figures should be understood on their own you do, don't have to read the text to understand that it, it should you know it, it should be uh, self sufficient so that is what uh, good figures are and avoid decorative uh, flashes you're not supposed to use all those uh, uh, you know decorative frames or you know trying to uh, make it appear uh, more ostentatious so it's it's about uh, information it's about putting it you know in a uniform and consistent manner where do you place the tables and figures and uh, uh earlier also i said you know there are two ways of doing it so the first option is to place all tables and figures on separate uh, pages after the reference list so you you do that uh, after the reference list uh, uh you know uh, after the references so it is not inside the text in inside the text you will say that place table 1 here and then you know table 1 is not there inside the text but it is there outside it is there after the reference table so that you know uh, um, somebody is reading does is not uh, distracted by figures the second option is to use the table and figure within the text after its first call out first call out means uh, the first reference to the table or a figure so different journals you know they uh, ask you to do these things separately some of them ask you to put the table and a figure on a separate page after the reference list uh, others they would ask you to embed each table and figure within the text so it depends on what are the specifications of the journal so you have to follow that uh if you see this table this is one kind of a table that we are showing you uh, 
this is a mean uh, this is the mean this is the standard deviation this is the range this is the cronbach's alpha if you see carefully you know there are uh, all these important elements there first of all the apa style sheet does not have tables with these vertical lines so there are no grid lines only one line you know at the top about the column and one at the end it has you know the name the uh, uh, description and the column and then there is a node at the end so this is one example of a table i'll just explain it in greater details in the next slide so uh, this is what an apa cell table looks like so the first important thing to understand is there are no grid lines so if you are using it from an excel or from another thing uh, other other uh, uh, application you have to remove the grid line so there are no uh, even horizontal grid lines inside the table and of course there are no vertical grid lines anywhere there are no vertical grid lines i'll just zoom it and you know show it to you uh, first of all the table number because that is how you are identifying according to table number 1 or according to whatever so you are identifying that then you are having the uh, uh, table title very important because that title gives people an idea about what they are reading uh stub heading uh, heading is the you know that uh, describes the leftmost column this uh, this is the, they are uh, describing it as a stub heading the column spanner because you know uh, this is about uh, uh you know this is kind of a deck headline as you can see headline so that you know you are uh, avoiding repetitions you're not writing boys boys you're not writing girls girls this is this with and without this is about girls and this is about boys so that is why we are talking them as a co column spanner so as you can understand you're trying to make it as readable as possible trying to uh, make it as minimal as possible uh, then the column headings which are necessary uh, these things are known as cell we are not going to talk about that of course you know about that this is the table body you know uh, it is a heading that covers we have uh, table spanners too which covers the entire width of the table body it allows for future division so this is again you know this is about wave 1 wave 2 so on and so forth plus we have the table notes at the end to explain about the table itself so these are the elements of you know uh, uh, the table so this is a very uh, complex kind of a table all your tables will not be that complex but i took this complex example to just to demonstrate that uh, this is how tables are constructed according to apa style uh the reference is supposed to have these four important elements we have spoken about citations we have spoken about uh, uh, tables and figures now we are going to talk about one of the most important things which is about the reference because every work that you use it has to be cited uh it has to uh, you know have a reference and the reference should have these four Im uh, information necessarily it should have the author it should have the date it could be year i mean just writing about date you know if it's a website it can be a particular day or month but generally you know it talks about year if you're talking about a book the title and the source where where do you get that so these are the four important elements of reference this is how you reference a uh, journal article so if if you just uh, see that we are having the author this is the name of the author always the surname first comma the initials not the full name so apa style will own, will, will have always like that the surname comma initials and you know again surname comma initial then the year as i said you know this is about uh, journal article so this, there is only year but they are describing it as date because you know if it's a social media uh, uh, um, source or if it's a, if it's from a website there will be particular dates the title of the uh, article that you're citing and where do you get it you get it in a journal called development psychology uh, um, 549 in the 50 uh, the uh, 54th edition the ninth volume or the 54th volume the ninth unit these are the pages and every journal article you know as far as possible they should have this digital object identifier doi so all journal articles they should have this so, so that you know anybody who wants to read more about it they can just search it through this doi 
so in the next few slides i'm going to talk about you know all different kinds of uh, uh, references and then i will show you on microsoft word on how to you know create these references so if it is a journal article as i said the name first followed by the year then the title the language learning as a language use etc etc then the source with the object identifier uh, the parenthetical citation i'm sure you remember that you know if if you want to cite you know at the end of your sentence that this is what i'm referring to in my text then it will be written like this it will be those two surnames comma the year if it is a part of a narrative it is going if it is going as part of the narrative then you will be saying that macaulay and christians in 2019 speak of language learning as this 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 as that so that is how you cite a journal article if it is an authored book with which doesn't have a doi then it will be just the name of the author followed by the year then the title of the book and the publisher uh, earlier we also used to have the city of publication in 7th edition they are not having the city of publication but if you using the city where it was published from then then there's no harm in that again the parenthetical citation is about the name and then the year and the narrative citation the, the name comes and the year comes in parenthesis chapter in edited book with doi so these are all different sources that we are talking about so uh, say for example there are these many authors balraj comma kf uh, murthy comma cr junaid comma kp and saha comma whatever so this is about the article name this is the uh, uh, article or this is the chapter and this is the book what is the book culturally responsible cognitive behavior therapy practice and supervision second edition and uh, where do the chapters appear they appear on page numbers 2872314 how to get this because you know uh, this will be very difficult for us to remember so many things as we carry on so what i'll do is i'll show you demonstrate it to you on microsoft word how to uh, add this to your database or you know how to uh, cite it uh, when you uh, when you want to cite it inside the text then you know uh, where you get it from this is the publisher which is american psychological association plus the doi there are books which have doi there are books which which don't have uh, uh, doi and as i told you when there are more than two authors if you see the earlier uh, thing you know when there were two authors we wrote both their names you know in inside the text when we were talking about the citation but when there are more than two authors here we have one two three four authors we'll just write the name of the first author at all so the first author is is uh, getting prominence here so balsam at all 2019 this will be a narrative citation this will be a parenthetical citation uh this again is you know if you are talking about report so there are you know many many kinds of uh, sources that you can cite i'm just demonstrating the the most important ones if you have to go through those sites you will see that there are uh, many other examples so this is about an annual report from the U united states securities and exchanges commission this is the final report this is how you cite inside and this is how you cite on a narrative paper presentation somebody has presented a paper at a conference and you are quoting from that or you are citing that particular paper so this would be about you know this is how you do it you, you uh, the name of the author always comes first then if you see this you know here you are having the year comma the dates of the conference march 32 april 2 if mama and happy nobody is happy the effect of parental depression on mood dysregulation in children Uh, then in third bracket you have paper presentation. Where was it presented? It was presented in Southeastern Psychological Association, 62nd annual meeting, New Orleans, LA, United States. So this is how we cite about paper. So it need not always be our published work. It could be about a paper which was presented in some uh, conference. And uh, this is how they are cited inside the text. If it is an unpublished PhD work or some other dissertation, so this is how it goes. you write the name of the author followed by the title and then you describe it as an unpublished doctoral dissertation and the name of the university and the citation will always be in the name of the author if it is a book review in a newspaper again you know the name and here you can see that the date is exact date so it's january 11 the year followed by the month and then the day this is how you write the date then the uh title reframing refugee children's stories review of then we are suggesting that okay what is that that's a review of this particular book it was in new york times 
we are also putting down a source there. So if somebody wants to uh, have a look there, they'll just have to click this and they can go there. And this is how we cite it, you know, at the end. And this is how we cite it as part of the narrative. It could be data set as well. So for example, if it is from a Pew Research Center, then, you know, we are just writing the corporate name followed by the year. Then, you know, what that data set is about and where do you get that data set. In citations, we'll just cite, cite the name of the center. Uh, if they are mobile apps, you know, this is a mobile app, uh, Hippocrates. So uh, we write about that. And where do you get it? We get it in the App Store and we write down the uh, hyperlink of that particular App Store. And here we'll just be talking about that particular app. So this is an app they're talking about. Film in another language. And there, you know, we credit the director. If the director is not known, then we must credit somebody who is in a similar post. So the director is, uh, is the author. And then the year, then the name of the film. If it is not in uh, English, then you'll have to translate the name in, in, in uh, the third bracket. So if it's a Bengali film, for example, you'll have to translate the name. Then you suggest, say that it's a film. And then you write about the uh, producer of the film. So this is how we uh, cite films. It's always about the director. So it's not the name of the film, but the director who directed that particular film. It can be a Facebook post as well. So the name of the person who's posting the date and the year, the first the year and then the date, then you know uh, what that post is. Uh, you know, whether you know they have a title to that post or uh, the first line or whatever. It could be, you know, or even if it's a status update or whatever. And then, you know, you uh, suggest if there's an image attached or whatever, and then the uh, link to that particular post. If you are uh, citing somebody's post in your writing, if it's a web page on a news website, it could be you know something like this: the name, the name of the uh, web page, and the website where you got it from. You cite it like these things. They might appear very difficult, but I'll just show you on Microsoft Word. This can be done very very easily. So uh, I'll. I'll uh, Stop the presentation here, and uh, within the, uh, in the next five minutes, I'll try and uh, I'll try and uh, demonstrate this on a Microsoft Word for you. How to uh, add citations? How to add you know those references, and how to get it in APA style? So I'll just try and share. Uh, Can you see the word file on your screen or what? Is the word file visible on the screen? Yes, sir. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Very good. No, sir. Very. I'm not being able to see the screen. You can't see the web. You can't see the word page. Yes, yeah, sir. Right now I can. Now I can. Okay. Okay. Very good. So what we do, uh, I'll just you know try and uh, zoom some parts of it to make it clearer to you. So uh, if you can see you know the uh, menu here, there is something known as references. Can you see these references here? Is yes. this part is this part visible? Yes, sir. Very yes, good. Sir. Very good. So uh, if you see the references here, this is where we have to go. And there is this particular screen where you have manage sources. If you click onto this drop down, it says uh, APS style. There are many other styles there. There's Chicago, there is, you know, a host of other sites there. We uh, don't want to show you everything. We will just click on to uh, the latest edition. I have the uh, Word 2019 version. So I have the APS sixth edition. Uh, how do you go about it? You have to click on to manage sources and you have to keep on adding, you know, whatever uh, uh, information. So I'll just show you one or two and then, you know, we will uh, talk about that. 
ha huh. so uh, say for example uh, this thing is already there i have you know already written about say for example uh, yeah so this is a book this is by uh, these are the things that i have to you know uh, keep on adding there if i write show all bibliographical fields there will be many other fields there so first of all you know as soon as i click on manage sources you know the, these things will appear it i can uh, use a book i can use a book section i can talk about a journal article it could be an article in a periodical it could be conference proceedings it could be report it could be website it could be document from a website it could be electronic source it could be art it could be uh, sound recording performance film interview patent case miscellaneous if you can see you know there are a whole lot of things that i can use on microsoft word to add here so if it is a book then i have to write about the author then the title the year if it is uh, if the city is known i write the city and you know if 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 other information is available i can write about that otherwise you know this is how it goes i will just press okay and uh, this is now added on to my uh, uh, database and i can use it to uh, if i press on to insert citation i'll first have to save this so let me zoom it again so just you know create an author let's call him whatever virat kohli for example suppose he's written a book called how not to lose a test match ever it should be a book it shouldn't be a book section let's use a book uh and he wrote it this year 2020 and say the publisher is bcci and the city is from delhi c this is now there as a citation if you if you can see this uh, it is it has been added to my placeholder it is now present there if i add references there i have just added a citation you know either the text citation or the sorry the uh, parenthetical citation or the uh, uh, narrative citation if i want to insert a reference thing there i will just click here and this is what i get so uh, i don't have to do anything i just add information to my word file and you know it will immediately uh, translate it to the apa style and it, it, it will you know put it up or like add the name of the the uh, surname of the author first then the name then the year then the title and then you know uh, uh, i didn't uh, if i didn't write the uh, city then it would just be you know the source where it was available from so uh, this is one very easy way of uh, using the microsoft word let me just demonstrate it once again for you so i'll just zoom it again so that you can see it clearly uh, go to manage sources click on to manage sources uh click on to new say for example i am talking about an article in a periodical it could be a newspaper say the author is 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 uh, some uh, 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 journalist uh, okay whatever uh, shubodeep ghosh for example i then on road to victory 
the periodical title say for example is the new york times the year is 2020 what is the month november is telling us how to write it because you know uh, when we are putting to the database we have to follow their instructions because if i am right now using apa style but if i have to convert it into some other style i don't have to work again it is there in the database it will you know change by itself the date today is 6 and say it was on front page again you know i'm writing some text and i want to cite uh, you know shubhodeep ghosh's article what i'll do i'll just go to insert citation uh, i don't know whether you can see this insert citation or not but you know i'll just let me zoom it there is a thing called insert citation here the moment i insert citation it will tell me which are the ones you want to insert so i'll just uh, insert this it will just use that particular format that we have just seen in a uh, while ago so we have already place holders The, we can use it whenever and the work cited i just have to update you know they, they have updated all the three we have added there so this is about you know uh, just see this closely the name of the author the date including the you know uh, month and the day the title and the source where you get it from and which page it is so you can add as many placeholders as you want to you know just have to know manage sources it will be there in that particular word file that you're using you just keep on adding new and you keep on adding the sources you keep on you know it could be uh, uh, i used an article in a periodical it could be uh, any of these things so you just keep on adding that and you know if, as you are typing you don't have to do anything you just insert citation and at the end you get the reference on your own so if you're using uh, uh, microsoft word you don't have to bother about all that you know it takes care of all the style uh, uh, requirements all by itself so uh, if we know the other parts you know this uh, style sheet thing becomes a lot more easier so i'll uh, end my presentation here i guess you know uh, we've been able to understand the basics of apa style and how to use it through microsoft word